Kenya's petroleum industry, which has been the talk of the town for the last few months, with the early oil pilot scheme that has been uh, seen trucks ferry crude oil from the oil fields in northern Kenya to Mombasa's defunct refinery for storage. We sought out the Mining and Petroleum Cabinet Secretary John Munez to unpack some of this major developments and where Kenya is putting its money in the industry under President Uhuru Kenyatta's second and last term in office. Here now is that exclusive interview that KTN's Abby Agina had with the minister. Well, many thanks for joining us. We want to have an exclusive interview with the Cabinet Secretary in charge of Petroleum and Mining, John Munez. What will be up on his cart, even as it delivers the oil project, as well as a lot of issues happening in Kenya pipeline when it comes to corruption, as well as capacity issues. And he now joins us live here on set. Many thanks, uh, CS, for making time for us. Corruption is a big subject in this country. I echo the sentiments of the Excellency the President that we should all fight corruption. Corruption is a menace. Corruption has destroyed this country. At the Kenya Pipeline Company, we have undertaken reforms. We want to undertake reforms there. We want to ensure corruption is happening there in the manner people are talking about is brought down the level we can now say, I mean, it cannot be seen. It, that, that should be a corruption-free zone. Parliament has raised issues. And I've gone to Parliament to, to, to raise issues with the members of Parliament on matters of uh, construction of uh, pipelines, on procurement of uh, necessary valves and what. There are many things that are happening there. It's a multi-billion thing. So you're bound to get people engage in corruption in a big company like that one. But we've got a new, a new board now, and I've challenged that board that the back stops with them, that we want to see heads rolling in the Kenya pipeline company. We're looking at all the cases. We have had to stop the payment of uh, the 4.4 billion to Zakem in order for us to ensure that the matter has been actually dealt with properly. We want to ensure due diligence is done so that every single contract is looked at through a mirror so that we ensure things are done properly. And uh, CS, every question that every Kenyan wants answered is how will they benefit from the oil? And how will it not become a curse for our country? We've seen a number of countries which have oil going towards civil war, civil unrest. As a country, what are we doing to ensure that we have a strong foundation when it comes to addressing such issues? We've already completed uh, the first phase of uh, oil exploration, uh, development, and we're now testing the market under what you call the early oil uh, piloting scheme where we are tracking 2,000 barrels per day estimate in the next three months to test the market for the international world to look at the quality of our, our, our crude oil. Our crude oil is, is said to be waxy, sticky, but it's good for the market. So we are not profitable until we complete a pipeline which is now ongoing in terms of the consultancy, in terms of, design. of, of the design and all that. And we hope by 2021 we'll have done a pipeline from Lokichar Basin to the Port of Lamu. By that time, we'll have enhanced our capacity to 60,000 to 80,000 barrels per day. At that point now, Kenya will be now commercially viable in terms of oil production. That is when we will start seeing the profits. There's been a lot of back and forth when it comes to the issues around oil. You've seen the local community claiming that uh, they're not getting a fair share of the revenue. From where you sit, uh, CS, how do we bridge the gap and ensure that 
both sides of the coin, be it from the exploration company Talo Oil to the national government, to the county governments, as well as to the people on the ground. How do we come up with a plan that ensures that uh, there is uh, a peace when it comes to extracting this all-important commodity? So when we talk of uh, the 75% for government, 20% for the county government, 5% for the community, it is not money readily available to us. It's until we have started exporting. It's going to be profitable. We're going to hit 3,000 wells, 300 wells. We're doing exploration in other counties. In El Geo we want to do Northeastern. We want to do in, in the region of Lamu. We hope we get oil in all this. And Kenya definitely will join the world as a world pro one of the world producers. Right. This is a real story. It's a true story. I know by 2022, Kenyans will see the proceeds we're talking about from this oil. There's a lot of hype around making people access uh, LPGs, that is the liquid, liquid petroleum, gas, uh, CS, and as a government, how committed are you towards this project and how soon can Kenyans buy cheap gas from outlets across the country? We must provide continuity in terms of our products. We must provide uh, safe products, high quality products. We must ensure as we do the last mile connectivity with the electricity, we have uh, the LPG project, the Mona Inchi project that must start quickly to ensure as you light your house, there's a cylinder there you're using so that we don't destroy our environment. We're not cutting trees and, uh, and, uh, and destroying the environment. Uh, it's, a, it's a health hazard in a house where in a small house you have firewood there. If we can provide cheap LPG to our people, and we're giving this job to, we're increasing capacity. We want to increase capacity of LPG so that Kenya Pipeline Company constructs mega storage capacities for storing LPG. We want to encourage other uh, local investors to come and, uh, and engage in LP, LPG initiatives. This is going to be a game changer again for this country. It is in terms of business, in terms of safety. And we will promise Kenya will provide quality products. The cylinders must be checked, must ensure the yeah, <coughs> quality. Quality, right. quality is right. And finally, C.S. Munez, what would you want to define your legacy as a petroleum minister in this country? Right now we are seeing a lot of countries across Africa, they are putting a lot of attention in the extractive industry. As a country, where are we heading and how can we ensure that uh, we achieve sustainable growth in the extractives industry? In the mining sector, there's a lot. It's a game changer. Mining is a game changer in this country. I've been having conferences in every county. I'm about to finish all the counties. Uh, getting the investors, encouraging them, supporting them, ensuring Kenya becomes uh, a mineral destination, a mining destination. Mm -hmm. And that will happen. We're now contributing 0.8% to our GDP. We hope to do that in three years. We hope to raise it to 10%. That can happen. We will work hard to ensure we, we raise it to 10%. We're looking at the lapset. The minerals in northern Kenya, we want to open up the lapset with the railway line there, with the good road. We'll be, we'll be shipping manganese, copper, all those minerals in, 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 in Samburu, in Isiolo, in Trukana, using the pipeline, uh, the, the, the lapset project. Yes. That is going to be a game changer. I want Kenyans to expect uh, us to do more. Uh, we will try to put a lot of effort in ensuring the petroleum and the mining sector is a viable sector in this country, contributes to the, to the revenues that this country requires. For this country to industrialize, for this country to change the lives of Kenyans, we must see ourselves benefit from uh, the process of this oil. 
we should see the counties of this country engage in mining in a very serious way so that we see revenues increase, so that we contribute to the GDP I'm talking about, the 10% contribution. We should sensitize our people not to interfere with the oil operations operating in this country, or happening now in some regions of this country, Trukana. We should take natural resources as a, as a common resource for all these nations, for our, for our country, that these are resources that will bring unity and peace for all of us, it should not divide us. We should not have a curse because we've discovered oil. It should only develop us. And we must all come together, and I'm challenging county governments, the governors. The governors have a big role in terms of the mining, the mining sector. They can provide a big role in ensuring they support the petroleum uh, sector also. The sensitizing people in ensuring we, we're working in tandem with the, with the policies that the, the ministry is, is, is actually giving out and ensuring uh, this country becomes an oil producer and at the same time becomes a destination, a mining destination and a hub for the mining sector in the Great Lakes region. Well, indeed, it's been a pleasure speaking to you, CS John Munez, the Cabinet Secretary in charge of Petroleum and Mining, just casting his vision for the industry as well as challenging various players to ensure that they deliver quality products to the Kenyan people as well as uh, delivering results. Well, that has been our exclusive interview with the Cabinet Secretary for Mining and Petroleum. My name is Abi Agina.